Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessie and today I'm going to be doing a video on how to pass the TEAS exam, which if you don't know what that is, the TEAS exam is a big three or four hour long exam that you must pass before going to nursing school here in America. These are just a few tips that worked well for me. I'm definitely not an expert. I did get a high grade. I got a 94.8. So it's not perfect, but I'm very happy with it. I'm very proud of myself. But yes, um, hopefully these tips help you guys. And if there's anything else that you want me to cover, feel free to comment later on in the comments down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. So let's get started. Buy a book. I know a lot of people didn't want to invest the money. I think this was about 30 or $40. Um, this is the ATIT's study manual. It is version six. Please make sure that you are studying for the right exam. Um, right now it is early 2019 and the exam is version six. I know in the past a few people went to take the exam recently and that they studied using a book for version 5 and they were a bit shocked when they got to the exam. So please, whenever you're taking this, whenever you're watching this video, make sure that you're studying for the current version. Okay, so if you've already started looking into the TEAS exam, you will know this, so if that's the case, please ignore me right now. But if not, just to let you guys know that exam covers four different chapters and it goes in a very specific order, reading, math, science, and then English. You cannot change this order, so if you'd rather do math first and get it out of the way, for example, you can't do that, so make sure you're aware of that. Okay, so for the reading, there are 53 questions in 64 minutes. Math, there are 36 questions in 54 minutes. Science, 53 questions again in 63 minutes, and then English, you have only 28 questions in 28 minutes. So make sure you're aware each section has a different number of questions and a different time limit per section. Overall, there are 170 questions to complete, and you have a 209 minute time limit. So it is a very long exam, but as long as you're aware of what to come and which section is next and how many questions are in each section, it will relax you because you know, okay, if I'm on the 30th question of math, I know I'm almost done with math. Yes, you know. Okay guys, just another tip before I get into the breakdown of each section, I would really recommend that you guys join the Facebook group. Um, I believe it's just called ATIT's exam. If you search it, I'm sure you'll find the one I'm talking about, but this helped me tremendously. Um, I thought I was doing very well with studying and I was, I was being thorough, I had a good schedule, but on top of this, every day I would check this Facebook group and thousands of people some days would have posted questions and if I knew the answer, I would answer and explain how I got that answer and helped everyone else and likewise, if there were questions that I didn't understand, there were hundreds of people answering each question so that it furthered my knowledge as well. So definitely recommend that. Um, it's a free thing, you know, it's just a Facebook group but it's a great community, people ask questions, you know, you can ask for explanations of how you got to a certain answer if you're not quite sure, you know, you don't want to just know the answer, you want to know how to get to that correct answer. Um, so definitely recommend that. And on top of the Facebook group, um, I would say download the Pocket Prep app on your phones. Um, there is a premium version. I believe it was about $15. Um, it's not crazy, but it was an amazing, amazing resource. One, because it's on your phone. I did a few questions here and there all throughout the day, you know, while I was eating my lunch. Every time I had a few minutes, I would answer a few questions, and again, it breaks it up into the, each of the four sections. So if I wanted to practice science that day, I did a bit of science. And what really helped me with that as well, especially with the science section because it's just so much information and it's just so in-depth of everything, you know, the other sections you kind of like, okay, once I know it, I know it, but with science, there's just so much to know. So for what, what worked well for me, sorry, is if I answered a question and I got it incorrect, or if I got it correct but I wasn't quite sure and it was a good guess let's say what I would do is I would screenshot the question with the correct answer and I just made a little folder on my phone of you know ATIT's questions and then every now and again I would review those questions and let me tell you I probably got about 20 questions on the actual T's exam that were identical to the questions that I was answering on the pocket prep app so let me tell you if you remember at least 20 questions and you get them exactly right on the exam you are going to be very, very happy. Um, just because you know, okay, that's guaranteed 20, right? Like, I'm off to a good start. So definitely join the Facebook group and download the Pocket Prep app. Okay, so the first section is reading, and a lot, a lot of people, including me, think the reading section is the hardest. Um, I thought, hey, reading, reading's easy. It's not. 
the TEAS exam really tries to trick you on this. So my biggest tip is to read the question first. Um, like I said, this might not work for everyone, but it worked really well for me. It saved me a lot, a lot of time. I know a lot of people actually run out of time on the reading section. So like I said, my tip, read the question, then read the article, then read the question and go back as you need. A lot of the articles that you're gonna be dealing with are very long, so you're just not gonna have the time to read the passage first, then the question, and then go back to it. So if you already have the question in mind as you're reading the passage, it's gonna help you pinpoint what the answer is and what they're looking for, and it is gonna save you a lot, a lot of time. Okay, so the most frequent type of question you guys are gonna see on the reading section is gonna ask you what type of passage it is. It could be persuasive or argumentative, narrative, expositionary, technical, and the thing that helped me most in answering these was understanding trigger words and keywords. Um, I'm just gonna read a few as an example. When you guys go through the book, um, there's gonna be a lot more than what I'm gonna say, but just as an example, if you read a passage and you see the phrases after a few days, on the next occasion, from this point, not long ago, previously, till next time, you know it is a narrative passage. And in the same way, there's going to be those keywords for each type of passage that you are going to have to identify. Um, what I did might seem lame, but I made a list of all these different keywords so that when I was reading a passage, if I thought, oh, I think it's this, I saw one of these keywords and I was like, nope. I know it's expositionary, for example, because it just made it very clear for me, like, if I look for these keywords, which honestly, they are very common in each type of passage because they're like, they're indicators, you know, they're keywords, they're trigger words for a reason. So learn these guys and you're going to be fine. Um, when I started doing the reading questions, I would be getting like 20 or 30%. I was like, oh, I'm never going to pass this exam. Like, I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> it brought my grade up probably 60% from what I was doing when I started the reading questions. So learn those trigger words, you're gonna be fine. Okay, I hated math my whole life. I dreaded going to math class in high school. I always thought I was bad at it, but I got 100% on the math section of the T's exam. Very freaking proud of myself, but um, I'm gonna tell you why I think it's the easiest section of the four sections. Just because with math, once you know how to do a certain problem, you're always gonna be able to do that problem. For example, if you know how to work out an inequality question, you're always gonna be able to answer those inequality questions. And the, the math section is, I won't say it's easy in the sense of what you're learning, but once you learn it, you know it. And so all I did for the math, I didn't use pocket prep, I didn't use the Facebook much, all I did was follow the guide of the math section in the ATIT's manual. I went through chapter by chapter, each chapter, in this book is maybe like half a page or a page long so it's really not a big chapter but it's each type of question so I worked my way through every type of question until I was confident in each one and I got 100% and I helped a few other girls that were preparing with me and they all got above 95% by doing this a few times they came to me and they were like hey Jess do you think this is going to be on it and I was like is it in the manual and they were like no and I'm like then don't worry about it and you know what a few of them were worried because they were like what if she's wrong but they all did it and they all got amazing grades. Even if you think you're good at math, just go over the things from the very beginning because the way the T's questions are worded, they're just, they're structured a little differently to our math questions, how they were in high school. So I don't want that to trip you guys up. Okay, another thing I wanna mention, um, just because it's very bizarre to me, but in math, you're gonna have to know some real world approximations for sizes and weights, things like that. For example, if you see a question that asks you how much one aspirin tablet weighs you're gonna have to know that it's equivalent to one gram i think i got a weird question about how much a bag of sugar weighs and i'm like how would i know that i think it was like five a five pound bag of sugar was just over two kilograms or something like that quote me if i'm wrong but um again i have no idea why they want you to know this because nobody in the real world talks or refers to measurements like this but make sure you go over them there right there is a list in the teas book somewhere so just make sure you know those random equivalents that a lot of people don't expect them and they're not prepared for them so they drop a few points but if you guys know that little table you're gonna be fine when those weird random questions come along asking you how much a bag of sugar weighs. Okay the science section is difficult yes um there's a lot of material to know I get that um if you study in the right way it shouldn't be too bad I mean me personally I love science I love studying for it I know that's not the case for everybody but I got a 98.9 percent so I think that's one or two questions incorrect um obviously I'm very happy with that I, you know very high score great 
but I'm just going to tell you guys what I did. Um, I mentioned earlier, but get the premium pocket prep app and screenshot any of the science questions that you get wrong and then go back to them. Make a little folder for science questions in your phone and review them. Like I said before, I got probably 15 to 20 questions that were identical on my actual exam, which I immediately knew the answer for just because I had saved them from that pocket prep app. So definitely do that because trust me if you see a question that you know the answer to like this you're gonna be like yes thank you extra point like i know i got that one right but the main thing they're going to ask you about are the different body systems and you know cardiovascular respiratory musculoskeletal urinary and what i did is i made a one page summary per system um this one was cardiovascular and what i did i would list the organs in each system um the enzymes and hormones that I in play in each system and then key processes for example um in the respiratory system i made a little box outlining the process of gas exchange in the alveoli just because gas exchange is like the key thing of the respiratory system that's the whole point of it um and then on top of that you have to understand how one system works with another for example how the respiratory and the cardiovascular work together so it's a lot of material it's a lot to know I would advise make the summary sheets like I did just because then everything per system is in a certain place you know if you feel confident with cardiovascular but you need to address the skeletal system you can do that if vice versa you know they're all broken up so that means you can kind of study them in individual chunks and I Personally, I just think it helps because as opposed to thinking, oh my god, I need to know every body system. If you think, no, you know what, I'm good with five of them, I just need to go over these few now. It, it makes the studying process a lot, lot easier and more manageable. So, make study guys, get the premium pocket prep app, science, you can do it. Um, a bit more of a specific thing actually for science is understand the roots of words. Um, what I mean by this is if you get a question that is asking you about the kidneys and you don't really understand the question, you don't really know the answer, you know, you just haven't got a clue. If one of the questions has the word renin or renal or something with that kind of sounding word, you know that's most likely the answer just because because renal refers to kidneys so if you get the if you get an answer that one of the multiple choice questions that says renin which is one of the hormones in that in that body system you know that that's most likely the answer just because you can relate it back to the kidneys means renin renal all of that so extra thing that helped me is just really understanding the different meanings of the words um and i probably got a few questions right just for linking and you know taken a good guess okay so the english section is the last section it is also the shortest which is very nice but the first thing i'm going to say is don't rush it a lot of people including myself when i did the practice exams i was like you know what i've done like two hours i'm i'm, fe I'm feeling good and then i kind of skipped through them and went too fast and then i kind of got a low grade so make sure you give the same amount of time and dedication as you did to the other sections to the english questions um don't lose marks because you're not paying attention you know make sure you read the question twice um especially for english make sure you read the question twice actually um a lot of the questions are going to ask you for a synonym or an antonym of a certain word and me personally when i was practicing this i pretty much always assumed it was asking me for a synonym and i kept getting them wrong and i was like what am i doing and then i finally realized like bam yes okay it's not asking me for a synonym it's asking me for an antonym so again double check the question double read it ask what it's really check what it's asking you sorry and don't lose marks for those silly questions because for most people synonyms and antonyms are going to be very easy points to get um another thing i want to mention is there's going to be maybe four or five questions that are asking you to identify the correct spelling of a certain word and most people think i'm good at you know you're good at spelling i thought i was good at spelling which not that i'm bad but a lot of these words i definitely w was not spelling correctly um this is just a little list of commonly misspelled words um accommodate achieve embarrass scissors schedule um 12th vacuum vicious um so what i did to help this because again i thought like i wouldn't have a problem with spelling but I did <laughs> um so i made a list of probably 40 or 50 different commonly misspelled words and then what i did i rewrote them several times and then i think for me it just kind of clicked like after i had 
written them out correctly several times once I then saw the word I was like you know what I know that this is the correct version because it's kind of like ingrained in my mind um that sounds a little weird but I'm pretty sure it, it will kind of click for you guys too just like I said just google it you know commonly misspelled words pick out the ones that you thought you knew but apparently you didn't make a big list of them and just go back to them every now and again okay guys I'm done with my summary I really hope this helps you in some way um, I know I've said it a few times but I know we all have different strengths and weaknesses we all study in different ways and that's fine but these are all just things that tripped me up when I was preparing for the tea so hopefully you guys can avoid these silly mistakes that I made and hopefully they just bring up your grades and bring up that overall grade and you go on to become great nurses and I'm still waiting myself um I'm gonna find out if I get accepted into nursing school probably in the next two or three weeks so hoping for the best um pray for me but um yeah if there's anything else you guys want me to address or any questions that you might have feel free to comment down below any you know anything that you want me to go over I will do my best to you know get back to them as I go um but yeah thank you guys for watching take care